Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh again. Um, inshallah ta'ala, today, like I was saying, I wanted to talk about a name of Allah Azza wa Jal. Um, and it's a name that I never really used to pay very close attention to. Um, it's a name that I knew the meaning in English, but the meaning in English, I didn't even know. Like, I didn't know what it meant. Um, so the name is Al-Halim. Um, does anyone know what Al-Halim means? Okay. Al-Halim means the forbearing. Does anyone know what forbearing means? <laughs> no. It's, it's... <laughs> no, that was a good guess. Um, okay, so, inshallah ta'ala, I'll give you the translation as we go. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about himself as being Al-Halim. That's one of the attributes he gave himself. It's one of the names he called himself by. And Halim is also another name that he associates with prophets. A certain, like, certain prophets. Um, of them is Armin Man Ibrahim Ali Islam. Or the guy. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls him Halim Wais, from what I know. So I'm just going to... So yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls Ibrahim alayhi salam Halim. Um, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also calls his son Ismail Halim. Um, and then inshallah ta'ala will explore why. Um, so to be Halim, it means, or it comes from the word Hilma. Hilma means to bear patience for a very long time. To wait it out for a very long time. There's actually a meal called, uh, I think, Hilma as well. Not sure what culture it's from, but basically you boil meat and veggies. It's like a stew, but you're boiling it for like eight hours. You're cooking it for eight hours. So you're you're really, really being patient with it until the texture of the meat is like the texture of the vegetables. Like you can't tell the difference between them. So this meal it comes from the word hilma because you have to wait like eight hours at least for this meal to cook. Okay. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls himself Al-Halim, it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is waiting and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being patient. To be Halim, it means that someone committed injustice, okay, someone committed injustice and you have every right to take them to account. You have every right to punish them for what they have done, yet you wait. Okay, you give it time. That is Al-Halim. So that is Al-Halim. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls himself Al-Halim, it means so many different things. It means that he is capable of punishing you and he has power over everything, that he has ownership over his dominion. Yet he still, like, and then we, we sin and we, we transgress and we commit injustice and we disobey the commands of Allah. And then he says, give them time. I'm not going to bring about punishment right away. Let's give them time. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Malik al-Muluk, the king of all kings, Malik al-Muluk, the king of the dominion, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the owner of the heavens and the earth and everything in between, created us and allowed us to live in his kingdom. We are living in the king kingdom of Allah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed us to, to live on this earth that is his property. It belongs to him. And then we have the nerve to disobey him, right? And it's going to happen. But when we disobey him, we commit an act of injustice. Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ibadi inni harramtu dhulm ala nafsi. So he says, Oh my servants, I have made injustice haram on myself. Meaning Allah will never commit injustice. Allah will never be unfair to anyone. Anything that Allah does, know that he does it with justice. Any, any uh, thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees, know that the wisdom behind it is just. It's fair. A thousand and ten percent, it's fair. Allah doesn't have to account to anyone. right? Allah doesn't have to answer to anyone. And yet he has made something haram on himself and he will hold himself to that. Allah made a rule for himself. And he says, I cannot be unfair. Despite how much I love someone or maybe how much I dislike one of my servants, 
I will not be unfair to them. It's impossible for Allah to be unfair. He will never be unfair. And so when we sin and, and we um, disobey the command of Allah, while we are in his kingdom, while we are living in his dominion, and we are being sustained by him and, and by what he owns, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to live and he gives permission to, to our lungs to take in oxygen, and he gives permission for our heart to pump out blood. And then we transgress against him using those same blessings that he gave us in the kingdom that he allowed us to be in from, from the food and the water that he nurtured us with. And now we sin and we disobey his command. It's 110% just for him to send down punishment on us that exact moment that we sin. Do you guys get that? That the second we sin, the second we commit an act of injustice, it's totally fair for Allah to send a lightning bolt to destroy us. He doesn't have to wait. He doesn't owe us that. That the second we, we say a lie, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can cut off our tongues right away and it would be fair. Right? We can't say anything. <laughs> we can't say anything. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, it would be completely fair. <laughs> I did not mean to say that. <laughs> yeah, it would be, it's, it's not unfair, right? If we commit an act of injustice or if we sin against ourselves, if we sin um, and we go against the commands of Allah using our hands, Allah can cut off our hands right away and we can't say anything. It's fair, right? It's a thousand percent just. If we sin committing our eyes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can cause us to go blind right in that second and it would be justified. Because he gave us those eyes to begin with. And he commanded us not to, to commit sin with those eyes. Or not to go against his commands with those eyes. And we did it. Allah could take away our eyes right away. And it would be justified. It would be perfectly just. But Allah says, hold on. I'm going to give them a chance. I'm going to allow them a period of time to repent. Assalamu alaikum. I'm going to allow them the opportunity to seek my forgiveness. And if they come back to me during that period, then I will forgive them. This is Allah's hilma. For Allah to be halim, it means that he is patient. It means that he is not bringing us, bringing us to account right away for our sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Kahf, لَوْ يُؤَخِذُكُمْ بِمَا كَسَبُوا لَعَجَّلَ لَهُمُ الْعَذَابِ or لَوْ يُوَاخِذُهُمْ بِمَا كَسَبُوا لَعَجَّلَ لَهُمُ الْعَذَابِ If Allah SWT were to take us to account for the actions that we put forth, He would have rushed the punishment. Like right away, He would have rushed it. And then He says, بَلْ لَهُمْ مَوْعِدْ Like, no, 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 there's a, there's a specific period of time that I wrote that I will bring them to account. And during this period of hilma, during this period of, of waiting, and of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving us the opportunity, if we come back to him during this period, Allah will forgive us and we'll be higher in rank than we were before this period. Do you guys get that? And so Allah being halim means that he has every right to take us to account in that exact moment. But he says, no, I'm going to give them another chance. That when we commit a sin, we know from the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaykum. We know from the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That when we commit sin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the angel on our left shoulder who's writing down the bad deeds, he says, hold your pen. Do not write. Wait six periods of time. And if they come back to me during those six periods of time, then I will forgive them. Then you're not even writing it down. And then the angel on your right writes it down. Right? And so this is the hilma of Allah. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being very patient with us after we, we committed injustice against ourselves and we are going against his commands. The hilma of Allah, the patiently waiting of Allah, giving an, us another chance. And he has every right to take us to account for our sins. He has every, account, uh, every right to take us to account for, for the actions that we put forth that go against his very commands. While we are in his dominion and we are being sustained by, by his sustenance, and while we are being enveloped by his mercy, and while he knows everything that we're doing, 
that nothing is hidden from him, he continues to be Halim. And I'll mention how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all-knowing. And one of the names associated with the name Halim in the Quran, or one of the names that it's paired with, is Al-Alim. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the knower of everything. That nothing that the sky shines upon is hidden from Allah. And nothing that the, that the night envelopes over is hidden from Allah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. He knows what's in front of you and what's behind you. He knows the past and the present and the future. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. Nothing is hidden from him in the heavens and the earth and everything in between, everything beyond and everything below. It's all his. And he also has knowledge of everything. Of everything that's going to happen, of everything that has happened, of everything that will be, of everything that has been. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has knowledge over all of it. He has knowledge of over all of it. And while he has knowledge of all the sins we're committing, and while he has knowledge of all of the whispers of our souls, like how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we have created man, and we know what his soul whispers to him of evil, and we are closer to him than his own jugular vein, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows us better than we know ourselves, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what our souls whisper to us when we think it's the shaitan whispering it to us, but it's actually ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows all of it. And he says, I am Halim as well. I am Alim, but I am Halim. I am the all-knowing of everything that's going on, but I am also going to give you time. I'm going to give you time to repent. I'm going to give you time to come back to me. And when you come back to me, you'll find me Ghafoor. Another name that's paired with Halim in the Quran is Ghafoor. Okay. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us this period of time when we sin and he has every right to, to cause the sky to fall on us, when he has every right to cause the earth to split and swallow us full, when he has every right to cause the mountains to come crumbling down and suffocate us, he has every right to cause the oceans to come flooding forth to drown us. But he says, I'm going to give them time. I'm not going to take, to, take them to account right away. I'm going to extend this period and, and there's a specific time where my punishment will come. And when my punishment comes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hijr that it will not come too soon, nor will it come too late. Rather, it will come at its appointed time. And with this appointed time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already included the time of Hilma, the time of him being Halim, the time of him allowing us to the opportunity to repent to him. And once we take that opportunity, we will find Allah ghafura. We will find that he is oft forgiving. We will find that he forgives our sins like they never happened. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-alim and he is al-halim. Right? Despite the fact that he knows everything, he will also give us time to repent and he will give us the opportunity to change. Right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-halim and he is al-ghafoor. He is the, the one who gives us time to repent and then when we repent, yajidillaha ghafoor al-rahima. We will find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghafoor, that he is very forgiving. Rahima, he is very merciful. So halim, um, like I said, it's mentioned in the Quran, um, talking about prophets. So it's mentioned um, in reference to Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Ibrahim alayhi salam was very tender hearted and he was very halim. He was very forbearing. Ibrahim alayhi salam had every right to go against his father. Okay. Ibrahim alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the command. He, he gave him the goal. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, okay, no, like, your prop says, no. Right? And Ibrahim alayhi salam continued, Ya Allah, forgive him. Ya Allah, he doesn't know any better. Ya Allah, he's just lost. And so Ibrahim alayhi salam is described by Allah as being halim. And so talking about Ibrahim alayhi salam, talking about his father, Azar, Ibrahim alayhi salam as, let's talk about like his childhood. Okay? Um, so I'm a little bit excited. So talking about his childhood, Ibrahim alayhi salam, 
as a seven year old, his dad used to be like, okay, he's of the age of like, he can understand things. Let me use him now. And Ibrahim uh, Islam's dad was a carpenter. So he used to like make idols and stuff. So he said, go take these idols that I made and sell them in the marketplace for me so that people can worship them. So that we can, I can make a living and I can sustain this household. Yeah. And so Azar had a very good reputation, by the way. Like he, he was a manufacturer of, of idols. He had a very good reputation. He was very like reputable amongst his people. And Ibrahim as a seven-year-old, just carrying out the commands of his father, he goes and takes the idols to the marketplace, but he knew that it wasn't right. And so he said, instead of like going to his dad, he's like, no, um, I'm not going to do that. You suck. Absolutely not. He goes and takes them to the marketplace, not intending to sell them. And he says, who will buy from me that which does not benefit them, nor will it harm them? About the idols. Who's going to buy something completely useless? Obviously, this is not a very good marketing strategy. And so he didn't sell anything like he intended. And so Ibrahim salam used to go and then take the idols to, to test them, go and throw them in the river as a seven-year-old. And he used to talk to them and say, swim, you're drowning. Swim, save yourself, you're drowning. And so Ibrahim salam as a seven-year-old understood what people who were much older than him didn't understand in his time. And so he used to do this every day following the commands of his father, obeying the commands of his father. And then once Ibrahim alayhi salam um, reaches like the age of like teenagehood, Ibrahim alayhi salam and his dad go into a little bit of an argument. Um, and his dad, uh, or sorry, Ibrahim alayhi salam refused to worship the idols. And he kept on asking them, why do you worship that which does not benefit you, nor does it harm you? Um, why do you worship that which does not um, speak to you? Why do you worship that which, um, sorry, why do you, like, basically, why do you worship the idols? All, like, the response all the time was we, um, بَلْ وَجَدْنَا آبَائِنَا كَذَلِكَ يَفْعَلُونَ We're just following the footsteps of our forefathers. That's what they used to do. And so there was no sense, there was no actual reason as to why they were worshipping them. And so Ibrahim alayhi salam, when it came to the to the festival, Ibrahim alayhi salam said, uh, Wallahi la asmamakum ba'da ib So he says, I'm going to destroy your idols after you leave. Like saying that under his breath. And so once they leave, he destroys all the idols except the kabiruhum, except the largest of them. And then when his people come back, and Ibrahim alayhi salam is in the right because Allah commanded him to do so. Right? And so when his people come back, they're um, questioning Ibrahim alayhi salam, who did this to our gods? Um, you're the only one who doesn't worship our gods. And then someone's like, oh, I heard a young man named Ibrahim saying this, this, that he's going to kill our idols. And then Ibrahim alayhi salam is questioned and he says, the biggest one did it. And so they go to the biggest one and they're like, okay, he got us. And now these people, they're like, we can't um, kill him because then his God will come after us. Um, like after the fire thing. Anyway, bottom line, um, fast forward. Uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Uh, sorry. So fast forward, Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he's talking to his father, he uses so many different forms of communication with him. So when he's talking to his father in Surah Maryam, he says, Ya abati. So he says, Oh my beloved father, why do you worship that which does not hear, nor does it speak, nor will it benefit you anything? So first he uses logic with his father. And he says, Oh my father, why are you why are you worshiping that which does not do anything for you? And so he's using logic. Logic doesn't work. And then he goes on to Ya Abati. Um so do you mind passing me a Quran from that bottom shelf before I continue? Um, anyone, yeah.
So then he says, Ya Abiti inni qad ja'ani min al-ilmi ma lam yatik. So now he's using incentive and exclusivity. So he's saying like, I have, basically, I know something you don't know. And he's not saying it in an arrogant way. He's saying, oh, my beloved father, part of knowledge has reached me that has not yet reached you. And so follow me and I will guide you to a path that is straight, that is upright. And so he uses incentive because every human being wants to be upright and wants to be honorable. And then he says, Ya Abati, la ta'budu shaytan. He says, oh, my beloved father, do not worship the devil. Indeed, the shaitan is to Ar-Rahman, the most merciful, super disobedient. And so here, Ibrahim is trying, like, basically taking everything off his chest and he's saying, don't worship the devil. Indeed, the devil, shaitan is to Ar-Rahman, super disobedient. And then he says, Ya abati, inni akhafu ayya masaka adab min Ar-Rahman. Oh, my beloved father, I am scared that punishment from the most merciful is going to touch you. And then you will be a friend to the shaitan. And then his father's response. He says, are you trying to take me away from the worship of my idols, O Ibrahim? He says, if you do not stop, then I am going to stone you to death. Wahijurni maliya and stay away from me for a while. And so Ibrahim is kicked out of the house. And what's the word that he was using to call his father? Like, what's the word that he called his dad by? Abati. So he says, Ya Abati. Oh, my beloved father. Abati is different than Abi. Do you guys like know the difference? Abhi just means the kind father. Abati is like a more affectionate way of saying my father. She's mm-hmm. like my dear father, my, you know, mm-hmm. father. Yeah. So Abati, like she said, is more affectionate. It's more compassionate. And so he's saying, oh, my beloved father. And he says it, ya Abati, ya Abati, ya Abati, ya Abati. And then his dad doesn't say ya Bunai, which is the equivalent. Oh, my beloved son. He doesn't even say, Ya Ibni, oh my son. He says, Ya Ibrahim, calling him by his first name, cutting the ties of kinship. He said, Are you trying to take me away from the worship of my idols, O Ibrahim? If you don't stop, I'm going to stone you. وَهِجُرْنِي مَلِيَّ And stay away from me for a while. And so he kicks him out of the house. Ibrahim alayhi salam's response, he says, سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكَ He says, may peace be upon you. سَأَسْتَغْفِرُ لَكَ رَبِّي I will ask my Lord to forgive you. إِنَّهُ كَانَ بِحَفِيَّ My Lord has always been gracious to me. Ibrahim alayhi salam didn't cut ties with his father then. He didn't say, oh, okay, you want to stone me? You're kicking me out of the house. That's it. I'm done with you. Ibrahim Islam gave his father time. He gave his father years later. And continuously, not only giving him time to, time to come to Islam by himself, he continuously went to him to give him da'wah. Oh, my beloved father, this doesn't make sense. Why are you worshipping that which does not benefit you? Why are you worshipping that which does not hear? nor does it see, nor will it benefit you, nor will it harm you. This doesn't make sense. And so Ibrahim is constantly giving da'wah to his father, and his father is constantly denying him. Ibrahim is halim because he's giving his father that time instead of cutting the ties of kinship right away. And so Allah says that Ibrahim is halim. He is awah and he is halim. Meaning he is very soft, kind-hearted, and he is very forbearing. That all of the, the insults that his father threw at him, Ibrahim alayhi salam remained patient. That all of the threats that his father um, said against him, Ibrahim alayhi salam remained patient with him. And so he is forbearing. And so Ibrahim alayhi salam makes a dua in Surah the Sofat. And he says, Ya Allah, Rabbi habli min as salihin he says, oh, my father, grant me, gift me a child from a salihin. 
So what's the word that he used? Salihin. So he says, oh Allah, grant me a child from the righteous. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And so we gave him glad tidings of a forbearing son. Rahim alayhi salam didn't ask for a forbearing son. Did you guys realize that? That was not his dua. His dua was, Ya Allah, grant me from the salihin. Grant me from those who are righteous. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, here's Hanim. Here's, here's a forbearing son. From this, we understand that the way that you are, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you a child like that. That if the way that you are to your parents, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you a child to be like that to you. And so when Ibrahim alayhi salam, the story continues, فَبَشَّرْنَاهُ بِخُلَامٍ حَلِيمٍ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him glad tidings of his son who was very forbearing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ مَعَهُ السَّعِيَ قَالَ يَا بُنَيْ And so when um, he became of the age of like intellects, he could understand things. Ibrahim alayhi salam says to him, Oh my beloved son, يَا بُنَيْ This is a term that his father did not call him. Okay, It's a term that his father did not call him. And Ibrahim alayhi salam probably wanted that term so badly. بُنَيْ my beloved son, instead of his dad cutting his heads of kinship with him. And so Ibrahim is like, I'm not about to continue that with my family. He calls him Bunay. He says, Inni ara fil manami anni madha tara. Ibrahim salam says, I have seen in my dream that I am going to kill you. That I am sacrificing you. And so tell me what you think. Now, remember when we said a couple of weeks ago that the dreams of the prophets are true? And so if a prophet sees a dream, he has to carry out that dream because it's a command from Allah. It's either a command or revelation from Allah. So when Ibrahim is sacrificing his son, he has to go and carry out that command. And so when he says this to his son, knowing that he has to sacrifice him, he says it in a way where he's, he's shy with it. And he says, tell me what you think. And his son says, قَالَ يَا أَبَتِي إِفْعَلْ مَا تُؤْمَرْ سَتَجِدُنِي إِن شَاءُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الصَّابِرِينَ So the first thing that he says to his dad is, يَا أَبَتِي Did you guys ever notice that? He says, يَا أَبَتِي Oh my beloved father. That's what he called, that's what Ibrahim alayhi salam called Azar. Do you guys get that? Ibrahim alayhi salam called Azar, Abati, and Azar in return didn't call him Bunay. He didn't even call him Ibni. He called him Ibrahim. Ibrahim alayhi salam has a son, and now his son calls him Abati, and he calls his son Bunay. Do you guys get that? And so he says, Ya Abati, if ma tu'mar, satajiduni insha'allahu min as sabirin. He says, Oh, my beloved father, do as you have been commanded to do. And you will find me, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills, from those who bear patience. And so Ismail was bearing patience in this moment. Ismail could have questioned the command. Like, you saw a dream. Like, <laughs> can Angel Jibreel come and confirm? Right? He, he could have questioned the command. He could have went and made dua to Allah. Ya Allah, I, I, don't, I don't understand this. Ya Allah, am I really going to die at the hands of my father? Ya Allah, is he really supposed to sacrifice me? He, he could have questioned, did you remember your dream correctly? But he was halim. Right? He was forbearing. And so he trusted his father and he remained patient. And so they go up to the mountain and Ibrahim is about to sacrifice Ismail. And when they both submitted to the command of Allah and they came on the mountain, وَنَادَيْنَاهُ أَيَّا إِبْرَاهِيمُ And we called him, O oh Ibrahim, قَدْ صَدَّقْتَ الرُّؤْيَا You have already fulfilled your dream. Well, that right. Right, it did. Yeah. You have already fulfilled your dream. You're fine. إِنَّا كَذَلِكَ نَجِزِ الْمُحْسِنِينَ That is how, or indeed, that is how we reward those who do good. إِنَّا كَذَلِكَ نَجِزِ الْمُحْسِنِينَ إِنَّهُ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا الْمُؤْمِنِينَ 
or he, he said before that, وَفَدَيْنَاهُ بِذِبِحٍ عَظِيمٍ وَتَرَكْنَا عَلَيْهِ فِي الْآخِرِينَ سَلَامٌ عَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمٍ So he says that this is indeed a huge test, that this is a huge um, like exam for Ibrahim alayhi salam. That is how we are, and so we sent him a sacrifice, and that is how we reward those who do good. And then he says, um, and we allowed him to have an honorable mention amongst the final nations. Salamun ala Ibrahim, peace be upon Ibrahim. He says again, that is how we reward the doers of good. He is indeed of our servants who are very, um, who are the believers. And then he says, وَبَشَّرْنَاهُ بِإِسْحَاقَ نَبِيًّا مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ and then Allah SWT answers his exact prayer. And he says, and we have um, given him glad tidings of a prophet from the righteous. Meaning Ishaq, right, his other son. And so when he made the dua the first time, Rabbi habli min as-salihin, O Allah, wa O Allah, grant me from those who are righteous. Allah SWT then says, and so we granted him from those who are forbearing. That was it, his du'a, right? And then after he fulfilled the command of Allah, he went and did as Allah SWT commanded him to do. Um, Ismail alayhi salam showed his, his forbearance. Then Allah SWT granted him from the prophets who were righteous. And he granted him another son who was the exact du'a of his. Mina salihin. Do you guys get that? And so... Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him that. Um, Ibrahim alayhi salam, like I said, he was halim because he gave his father time um, until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him, khalas your dad's at a time, basically. Um, and yeah. So when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being halim again, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam says that there is no one more patient with insults than Allah. There is no one more patient with insults than Allah. For they say that he has taken a son and that he, or they associate partners with him and they say that he has taken a son and Allah SWT continues to, um, to sustain them and he continues to clothe them and he continues to allow them to... One second. Yeah, about the blindfolded part. Um, and so the hadith goes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to sustain them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them good health and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects them. Right? So they continue to associate partners with Allah. They attribute to Allah a son and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to do all this stuff for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to sustain them in his dominion. He allows for their hearts to beat. He allows for their lungs to take in air. He allows for their brains to, to work. And he allows for them to walk and he allows for them to see and he allows for them to eat and talk. Right? And he doesn't bring them to account right away. And yet they associate partners with Allah. And they say that Allah has taken a son. In another hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in a hadith Qudsi in Sahih Muslim, or Bukhari, he says, Bani Adam, he says, the son of Adam has said a lie against me and he has no right to do so. He has said a lie against me and he has no right to say that. And he says, and the son of Adam has insulted me and he has no right to insult me. As for his lie against me, it is when he says, that I will not resurrect him after I have caused him to die. He says, indeed I, will indeed, I will resurrect him. And he says that the first time, um, sorry. He says, in fact, the first creation was not easier for me than resurrecting him the second time. Meaning they're both easy for him. And as for the insult against him, 
It is when they say that Allah has taken a son. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Well, I am al ahad al samad alladhi lam yalad wa lam yulad um, wa lam yakun lahu kufwan ahad. Or wa lam yakun li kufwan ahad because he's talking about himself. When he says, and I am the one, the only one, and I am the irresistible, I'm the one who never dies, I am the one who no one can escape from. I am the one who does not take a son, nor was, was he birthed. And I am the one who no one else is like. So when this happens, like we learned last week, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the heaven and the earth. And he says, تَكَادُ السَّمَاوَاتُ يَتَفَطَّرْنَ مِنْ وَتَنْشَقُّ الْأَرْضِ وَتَخِرُّ الْجِبَالُ هَدَّى He says that the heavens and the earth just want to destroy themselves. That they can't take what is being said about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has taken the sun. So تَكَادُ السَّمَاوَاتُ يَتَفَطَّرْنَ مِنْ That the earth just wants to break into pieces and fall. The, the sky just wants to break into pieces and fall. وَتَنْشَقُّ الْأَرْضِ And the earth just wants to split. وَتَخِرُّ الْجِبَالُ هَدَّى And the mountains just want to come crumbling. Like one rock after the other. أَنْ دَعَوْ إِلَى الرَّحْمَانِ وَلَدَى Whenever a Rahman, um, whenever a Rahman has been called as taking a son. Whenever someone says that a Rahman has taken a son. So everything in the heavens and everything on the earth, with the exception of the jinn and the human being, cannot fathom or cannot even bear the, the words that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken the son. And so they tremble out of fear of Allah and out of anger and frustration because they know the magnificence of Allah or they know of the magnificence of Allah with the exception of the human being and the jinn. When we hear it, it's like adi, right? It's normalized. When someone says Merry Christmas, we're like, oh, you too, right? When that's happening, know that the heavens and the earth just want to combust. The heavens and the earth just want to tear themselves apart. They can't bear that. Um, and so also, when it comes to the hilma of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we see this, or personally I see this most with Fir'aun. Okay, how Fir'aun declares himself, Ana rabbukum al-a'la. That I am your Lord the Most High. Worship me. You have no God besides me. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls Musa alayhi salam. And he says go give da'wah to Fir'aun. He tells him give da'wah to Fir'aun. And he tells him. And say to him. Layina. Say to him a very gentle word. Don't speak to him in a rough tone. Don't speak to him with attitude. Don't speak to him rudely. Speak to him gently. Speak to him gently so that he might um, might think, he might remember, and he might fear me. Right, The fear of me might enter his heart. And so despite Fir'aun doing all of these crimes against Allah SWT or against himself, and causing so many people to worship him instead of worshipping Allah, and those who worshipped Allah alongside him, they're still committing shirk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, go give da'wah to Fir'aun. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't take Fir'aun to account for his crimes right away. He allowed him the time. He allowed him the opportunity to come back to him before his appointed time. The time that he was going to die. The time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was going to destroy him. Right? And so that entire time when um, Musa alayhi salam was exiled from Egypt, and Musa alayhi salam like, was on the run, basically. And people were after him. And then he comes back to Egypt. And he asks to take Bani Israel. To take like the children of Israel. The good ones. Um, and he... like All this conversation with Fir'aun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving him that time. That period of hilma. That period of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, I will give him an opportunity to come back to me. And if he does come back to me, then I will forgive him. So much so that Jibreel alayhi salam was shoving dirt down his throat. And he, when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam was asking him about it, sallallahu alayhi salam, 
He said, why did you do that? He said, because I was scared because of how forgiving Allah Taala is. I was scared that if he continued saying La ilaha illallah that Allah would forgive him. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Halim and he is Ghafoor. Um, and yeah, it's pretty much it for today. If anyone has any questions, I know it was very short. Um, you guys can probably tell, but I'm on two hours of sleep or one and a half. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, I accidentally pulled an old nighter. Don't ask me why. <laughs> Literally did not know. I think it's a time change. But um, if you guys have any questions, I know my voice sounds like a man, so you guys can probably tell like that. But yeah, if you guys have any questions, if you guys want to discuss anything, inshallah, or is yours? Yeah. So they never, no. they never made up. No. So um, actually on the day of judgment, so Ibrahim alayhi salam, while he's making du'a for his father, and he says, li abi innahu kana min um, And so forgive my father, he is just from the lost. He then says, Wala And do not disgrace me the day that you bring us back. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered, like, he made a really, really long du'a, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a bunch of things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered all of them and he gave him all of them except and forgive my father. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't grant him that. So when he says, وَلَا تُخْزِنِي يَوْمَ يُبْعَثُونَ And do not um, disgrace me, do not humiliate me the day that you bring us back. On the day of judgment, there's a hadith that says Ibrahim alayhi salam will see his father being dragged to hell. Yeah. And then he sees his father being dragged to hell and Ibrahim alayhi salam will call out to Allah and he'll say in, in distress, and he'll say, Ya Allah, you promised me that you would not disgrace me today. You promised me that you would not humiliate me today. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Ya Ibrahim, look at your father again. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had turned his father into a hyena so that he doesn't see his father being dragged to hell and so that everyone doesn't associate this person being dragged to hell with Ibrahim alayhi salam. So if you don't know it's him, and then he gets dragged to hell. Pretty cool. Yeah. So, if you know how all of these prophets, like, you know, okay, some had dreams, they all had something special. Mm -hmm. Is Jibreel the only one who spoke to the prophet? Like, nobody so, else spoke to Jibreel? Or is it just. Okay, so Jibreel actually had a role in all of the other prophets. Did they talk to him? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if. They got like the revelation right like that, like yeah. how the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam got it. But um, yeah, Jibreel alayhi salam is the messenger angel, or like the main messenger angel. So he would bring the revelation to the prophets, even like before the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Um, there's actually a hadith that Jibreel alayhi salam spoke to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and he said, "Out of all the prophets I was sent to, you are my favorite." So yeah, cute. So yeah. Um, also with Jibreel alayhi salam, there's a really, really good class. It's like a three-hour class on YouTube. Um, Umar Suleiman, has anyone watched it? He did a three-hour class on Jibreel alayhi salam. Yeah, and he talks about how, um, like, how he was at the bottom of the wall to catch Yusuf alayhi salam as he was falling. Um, and how, yeah, he just, like, played a role in the lives of the other prophets. Yeah. Um, it depends. So, like when the Prophet وسلم, saw him, um, like that time where he was on the mountain, he didn't see him in his full angelic form. Um, Jibreel السلام, is the most powerful angel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a lot of angels. Um, but also like Maryam السلام, عليها, when Jibreel السلام, went to her to speak to her, um, he didn't come to her in the like he came to her in the form of a man and then some narrations say that he like went into his angelic form but it wasn't his angelic form it was the form of another angel like not like a like duplicate or anything but he just took a different angelic form because his form is like too yeah like too big but yeah 
Um, also with that as well, um, Jibreel alayhi salam gave Ibrahim alayhi salam the glad tidings that he'll have a kid. Um, and he also gave Zakaria alayhi salam the glad tidings that he'll have a kid. Um, yes. Three angels came to Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. It's either two or three, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, Jibreel alayhi salam was amongst them. Oh, yeah. From that hadith that I know. Yeah, yeah, no, you're good. You know, you don't have to sound like I'm years. Like, why is it, um, I always wonder, like, I know the whole time, so like, I know what you're saying. But why is there that it didn't even end as well? Like, the, like, all the prophets, like, yeah, too? Like, yeah. do you know? Yeah, I actually made a video on it last week. <laughs> huh? I, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, it's like one of my favorite things in the Quran. So Ibrahim alayhi salam, um, he makes a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he says, Oh Allah, grant me lisan siddiqin ali or siddiqin fil akhirin. Oh Allah, grant me an honorable mention on the tongues of the final nation. Yeah. Um, I know you understand it right now. <laughs> so I will I will go further. But, yeah. yeah, for sure. There's also another So in a way, the Muslims are the direct answer to their thoughts. They have a very strong connection to the Quran. Even if you see, like, for example, when you go to Hajj, everything you do in Hajj pretty much has to do with the Quran. Or something like in the story, right? But the law of the Quran, well, he built a town, right? People are going to have a red flag. For example, the stone in the Adra, but it didn't mean nothing. I think it's the meaning where you stole the thing. And also, Ibrahim alayhi salam said, um, Rabbi ja'alni muqeem as-salata wa min durriyati. Um, oh Allah, make me an establisher of prayer and from my offspring. And technically, we are the offspring of Ibrahim alayhi salam, so I'm related to him. <laughs> you guys are two. <laughs> you guys are two, but I am. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, also, Ibrahim alayhi salam made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that someone would carry on his legacy from his ummah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was like, I am the dua of my father Ibrahim. So he was... They're all related. Yeah. All uh, not all of them. So Ibrahim alayhi salam, so Adam alayhi salam, obviously he's related to everyone. <laughs> um, so after Adam alayhi salam, and like after he passed in his like uh, offspring, they went into like a very dark area and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like destroyed them and sent Nuh alayhi salam. And then once that happened, Nuh alayhi salam's people were terrible. Um, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed Nuh alayhi salam's people with the exception of a few. And then from those few came the other prophets. Um, and so Ibrahim alayhi salam had Ismail and Ishaq amongst like other prophets. And then from, Is uh, from Ishaq, he had like Yaqub, Yusuf, um, like Zak Zakaria, Yahya, all of those other prophets, um, Isa alayhi salam, Musa, and then from the progeny of Ismail alayhi salam, it's like no prophets, and then the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam was the only prophet from Ismail alayhi salam. But yeah, that's why the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam also refers to Ibrahim alayhi salam as Abi Ibrahim, like my father Ibrahim. I refer to him as well. I'm just kidding. I probably can't do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, any other questions, comments, concerns? Yeah, come on. Okay. Um, everything that I said today that was good and beneficial came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it did not come from myself. Anything that I said today that was bad, non beneficial, um, that you guys thought was evil or you guys didn't like, it came from myself and Shaitan. And it has absolutely nothing to do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, all good comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and everything that I said today was a reminder to myself first before it was to anyone else. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow me to benefit from these lectures more than anyone else does. Um, and yeah, with that being said, if I said anything to offend anyone um, or I did anything to harm anyone, please forgive me. So I think, yeah, yeah, you're good. <laughs> Um, with that being said, Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, nashadu an la ilaha illa ant, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk, wal asr, inna al-insana lafi khusr, 
إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر اللهم اجعلنا منهم ويوصف تعلمي تسمعهم يعني لازم يتكوف 